So we've had a couple of weeks of fall camp and a couple of scrimmages. What position groups are impressing us the most? You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back into Locked on Bama, HSA's radio network. Luke Robinson, that's me, and Bama Online's Jimmy Stein. That's him. Thanks for making it your first or second or third or fourth listen every single day. Appreciate you everydayers and appreciate you newbies. Welcome to our humble abode. Uh, <laughs> this is a brand new abode for me. Been here like three days. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and I'll tell you about FanDuel in just a bit. Jimmy, we're going to uh, talk about some position groups here that have impressed. I mean, I don't know that there's one that hasn't impressed. So we'll, you know, that's sort of homerific to say, but maybe you can uh, challenge that just a bit. But I did want to talk more about position groups that have impressed to date. Um, and you have one that sort of surprised me. It's not the answer I would have given, but I'm going to let you go first. Yeah, I would say it's the defensive line. And now some of this is some inside baseball laziness on my part as to why the defensive line impresses me the most. It's because I've watched them when I've attended. I think I've went to seven uh, practices and, and, and the full open practice. So I guess it's eight, but uh, it's the defensive line. And part of it, what I mean by the inside baseball laziness is when we, we, we exit the indoor facility to walk outdoors, to watch practice, uh, the different position groups uh, uh, do their drills at, at different parts of the field. And the defensive line is directly in front of us. Like right when we walk out the door, the first thing we're greeted with is the defensive line group. So out of laziness, I just don't walk far. <laughs> but but the real answer is I'm, I've been intrigued by watching them. And that's one of the real reasons I didn't walk to the very far side of the practice field to watch the quarterbacks. Because – the defensive line group has been super interesting. They're great to watch. Freddie Roach is fun to watch coach. He's very animated. He's very loud. You can hear everything. You can hear the player. You can, you can just hear everything, the instruction, what they're doing. And I, I tell you, uh, it's a deep group. Really impressed with, with uh, the overall physicality there. Uh, built really well. Again, Keon Keeley and Jordan Renaud, like a million bucks as they're building up their bodies, but then also guys that are trying to shrink their bodies a little bit, like a Tim Keenan, also looks really good. This is a deep, good group. I know that at the end of the year, Luke, there won't be a first-team All-American on this defensive line, so there will be Alabama fans who are disappointed and say it's not too good because where's the All-American? That's missing, I think, the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is this. There will be very few defensive line groups as a whole in this country better than Alabama's. It, this is a top five group. I'm adamant that that's true. If I'm wrong, okay, couple spots, top seven. But, man, it, it, it's deep. Uh, it's talented. And there are some, some high draft picks in this group. Some of them are just kind of younger and developing into what they'll become. Uh, James Smith is one of these guys. By the way, uh, one of my sources tell me James Smith actually was with the ones when the uh, scrimmage started on uh, Saturday. He was with the first team. The other good news is just about all those dudes can come back. Now, yep. a lot could happen, transfer portal, NFL entry, whatever, um, or just give up football. I mean, all that stuff could happen. But a lot of these guys, for all the angst about uh, not having a lot of defensive linemen in this class, this signing class, a lot of these dudes could come back. Now, you, should, you obviously want to take as many good defensive linemen in every class that you can. But, um, yeah, you know, that that's a good call by you, I think. Uh, I was going to go one of two ways. I was sure. going to go actually one of three ways, and that's how excited I am about everything. I mean, I, I think that I'm more ex- – the, the one that excites me the most It's probably the defensive back group. Really, and, um, just because of the potential playmaking. Right. Now, I think they will take their lumps to begin with. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, because they're all going. A lot of them are going to be very young or haven't even played in Alabama before. In fact, most of them haven't played <laughs> in Alabama before. So, and played in the SEC. Gosh, when you think about all the newbies in there, but they they all seem to be dudes, and dudes tend to dude to the surface. I don't know. That's, that's not um, no, I like I like it. 
there's the most question marks back there in the secondary, but there's also it, it's it's the poster child for this team to me, Luke, because there's reasonable questions. Because as you just pointed out, only Malachi Moore among the starting group has played football at Alabama in games. Only Malachi. So there's all these questions, but man, when you break it down and you watch them at practice and the open practice, uh, you get excited about the the potential for this group. Some of that potential is going to be realized well down the road because obviously Zay Mincy and Zabian and, and, and Bakwe, they're going to be better players as sophomores than they are as freshmen. I mean, so it's down the road for some of these guys. But, yeah, there there's reasons to be optimistic that the DB group might actually be pretty good. And then – you know, I think an easy answer is wide receiver, obviously. Um, it just so much playmaking potential. Uh, you got to, I've gotten more excited about it. I was worried about it a little bit, even though it seemed like I was super excited. But then when I see things like the highlight of Emmanuel Henderson making big plays, him catching a touchdown in one of the recent scrimmages, um, Rico Scott catching two touchdowns in this last scrimmage. I mean, I, I, you know, this is a Ryan Williams podcast. We believe in Ryan Williams. We're not worried about him. I'm not really worried about Jeremy Bernard. I feel like, you know, he's shown us know, enough to know that, hey, he might not be first-team All-American, but he's he's pretty doggone good. I think Kobe Prentice, again, uh, experienced dude in the SEC who's done well. Um, I don't think he's – you know, he's certainly not Devontae Smith level or Julio Jones level. I'm not even sure he's John Mechie level, but he's – He's in the area code. He can be sort of Kevin Norwoody, you know, <laughs> that, and which I'm fine with. Um, okay. I think that'd be a great uh, role to have. And then Cole Adams, a, a guy who's been dubbed Mr. Reliable by Coach Shepard. So I feel like that that group is also something to be excited about. Then, of course, the offensive line. And, you know, it's funny. Um, I saw your notes on BOL after the scrimmage, and you mentioned that one of the things you put in there was that the the snaps actually got back to the quarterback yeah. in a timely and straightforwardly fashion. Yeah. And somebody in the comment said, Hey, are we ever going to get to the point where we can uh, quit congratulating good snaps? And my answer to that is not until I see them on a consistent basis. Um, because yeah, and I wasn't congratulating Parker. I was just noting that, Hey, there's a lot of Alabama fans that have questions about the snaps and, and I'm raising Parker's, my hand hard as I can. Yeah, on Parker that, snaps on have been, Parker snaps have been fine. If y'all want something to panic about, I'll tell you, I'm not the kid. He's just a kid, but I and has had some bad snaps, but I mean, he's an 18 year old and he's probably not going to play in the games. You know why? Cause he's working on this and he's going to be a, a center for us down the road and not right now. But yeah, he's had some some errant snaps, but uh, you know it doesn't give me the willies because Parker Brailsford's been fine, and if Parker goes down, then uh, I- I'm thinking the next center's probably Geno Vandermark. It might be Rock Montgomery. Uh, you know, it could be Ayanata, but uh, I-, I think it's more likely Vandermark. All right, Jimmy. A lot of miscellaneous Alabama stuff in the news we want to get to, and uh, we're going to do that. But I got to tell you about FanDuel. This is one of my favorite things. You've heard us talk about FanDuel a lot. It's America's number one sports book. That's why we talk about it a lot. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Trust me, I get NFL ticket. I love it. I only buy YouTube TV for the Sunday ticket. Then I cancel it. That's how easy it is. So you can get three free weeks That's pretty awesome. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. That's the beauty of this thing. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book, which, of course, as we all know, is FanDuel. So it's AK Deer Eve. Um, oh, yeah. You know, he should be committing tomorrow, <laughs> barring uh, something crazy. Uh, but it feels like it's going to be Alabama. I still feel very good about this. And this is how good Alabama's recruiting class is right now. For all the hand wringing, 
for all the, oh, my gosh, we lost another guy to Tennessee. I don't like it either. I'm not trying to downplay it. I'm trying to bring a dose of reality to everybody. This is how good the class is. When A.K. Deer commits to Alabama, and I believe he will tomorrow, that should take Alabama still to the number one class in the country. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable on multiple levels. But as you put it that, you put it perfectly. I mean, even with the attrition from the class, which is to be expected in this new era, we'll be saying it for many years, I guess, until it sinks in about how this works now. It doesn't work like it used to. It works differently. And you're going to lose guys uh, just like Alabama lost Harmon. But all that matters is the talent acquisition piece. And, and it is measured – uh, by these recruiting rankings, and I'm a believer in the rankings. I'm I'm a proponent of the rankings. I, I do think they mean a lot. They don't mean everything. They're not the gospel. They're not scientific. You know, uh, it's not a scientific chemical equation, but they mean something, and they mean a lot. And if Alabama's number one, there doesn't need to be any. How crazy is complaining about the number one class? How crazy is that? I mean, are we that crazy? Uh, uh, and if Alabama adds AK Deer, we're number one. Now, will they be number one to stay? Guess what? There's going to probably be more poaching. Now, poaching works two ways. Alabama may be a poacher at some point. And again, there's going to be names emerge this fall. I'd also point out that, um, you know, there's going to be a new roster limit next year, 105 and, and not 85. So you can have up to 105 players on scholarship. Um, is that going to increase the size of this class? Maybe, maybe. But overall, you still have to stay under 105, Luke. And I can't, I can't tell you what the exact math is right now because I'm not sure. But my point is, you got about 86 guys right now, roughly 86 ish that that you think are probably kind of scholarship guys. And you're you only got about eight seniors that can't come back. There's only around eight. I think it's around eight that just can't come back. So 86 minus eight, 78. And how many are you bringing in in this class? We're going to say. 25, okay, 25 plus 78, that's 103, okay? And you want to sign a couple guys out of the portal, there's your 105. Now, I do realize people say, hey, dummy, guys are going to get in the portal and leave when the season's over. I know that. I know that. But you know what? Also, this is true. It's a new era. We don't know how players are going to react in the transfer portal era. And unlike what a lot of people think, Kalen DeBoer and his staff don't sit around all day thinking about who can we run off they want to keep most of these guys. Most of the guys that enter the portal, they would actually like to keep. So my whole point to that rant is don't think that Alabama wants to be signing 35 guys in this class because of the new roster limits or any other reason. It, it's probably going to be around that 25 number. And once you add AK Deer, you're almost there. So don't, be like some people are like we haven't been adding commitments how many do y'all think we can sign i mean and by the way the new 105 i'm going to be saying this on blue in the face because i can already see the frustration coming on this there's no more fuzzy math there's no more creative math those days are over it's a firm hard 105 period 105 no walk-ons no no blue shirts no gray shirts no teal shirts no any colored shirts it's 105 so you also have to be careful of how many you're bringing in because you can't bring them in and then go, uh-oh, we're over 105. You can't do that. You can't. You can't even risk it. So, again, I, I think the number is going to be around 25. That would be a good number. Now, I want to go back to something you said about, uh, and we talk about this all the time, about recruiting and not being scientific. That is very true. But I, I picked out – I went back to 2022 because I feel like that's a good place to say, okay, th those players have developed enough to be uh, – have an effect on this year's playoff run. Now, right. here's the top several classes from 2022. Number one was Texas A&M. And you go, oh, see, see, uh, that, that already blows your theory out of the water. No. Texas A&M also had a lot of inner turmoil – that was a problem. And they've also lost a lot of these dudes to the transfer portal. By the way, I did see one prognosticator have AM in the playoffs. Just I was about to say, I, I'd call AM a legit playoff contender. I'm not putting yeah. them in the top 12, but they're they're a playoff contender. Okay. So then the next few, Alabama at two, Georgia at three, Ohio State at four, Texas at five, Notre Dame at six. 
Penn State at seven, Oklahoma at eight. Now, keep in mind, Oklahoma has had several people transfer since then because, and, and I do consider them a, a playoff contender, um, and they might not be this year because, number one, their schedule is is Herculean, and number two, uh, they have had a lot of turnover because they lost their coach. Number nine is Michigan. All they did was win the national championship last year. Number 10 is North Carolina. I will give you this. That's an outlier. That's a little different. Um, number 11 is Oregon. Now, Oregon it should also hard. get a bump because they got so many transfers coming in. Yeah, they're a portal recruiter. They're the old Miss of the West. They do yeah. really well in the portal. So, I mean, my point is I just laid out a bunch of teams in the top 11 that are all, I mean, playoff teams. really, ex with the exception of North Carolina, I would say every one of them that I mentioned has yeah. a legit shot at the playoffs. And, I mean, who really knows about North Carolina? I don't think they have a legit shot. But yeah, I don't know my what's point going is on this, there. when you That'd say – That would be an interesting show. We ought to do a Locked On Tar Heels, just me and you, because that's an for, – for one show. Because that's interesting because, boy, it seems like under Mac Brown they've recruited better – seems like they have. And they had Drake May. And then I'm like, aren't we in like year three or year four or whatever of Mac Brown there? And guess what? They're, are they seven and five in a week league this year? Yeah, they just don't – they just can't get over the hump. You know, they started pretty well, I think, last year. And I, I don't know. It just – I don't even know what their record was. Yeah. It feels like North Carolina just goes away. They just dissipated. If you, if you want to be a good team, start at quarterback. And look what they had at quarterback and yeah. still didn't – get to an ACC championship game. And and I'm a Mac Brown fan, by the way. I mean, I, 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 I like Mac Brown. I think he's a good football coach, even at his age. But they're just not great. And recruiting says they should be pretty good. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure they're going to beat Minnesota in that first game, although I, I guess I'll take Carolina. Max, Max Johnson's uh, veteranness probably wins the game. You know, I want to remind everybody, Locked On College Football is uh, up and going, and it's awesome. College football is back, and Locked On College Football podcast kicks off the season and the action with a live season preview at 7 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, August 20th on the Locked On College 24-7 streaming YouTube channel. This four-part series covers each of the four major conferences with discussion on ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, and SEC teams. Uh, that have a shot of the, at the expanded playoffs. Look, Jimmy Stein was a part of this. Uh, be sure to check out this special streaming on Locked On College 24-7 YouTube channel or on Amazon Fire TV, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which, of course, is your team every day. Every day. Time to talk a little eBay Motors, yo, because it's the best. Passion, drive, and patience, those are the keys to championships. And it's also what keeps your ride or die car alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, supercharged roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. They easily have you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your parts are guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber. You're not burning cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions, yeah, they apply. And eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. So, Jimmy, just a couple of uh, Alabama in the NFL preseason notes. Mm -hmm. Kool-Aid McKinstry, I hope he's okay. Yeah. He got a little dinged up like on the first of the series. Maybe yeah, I saw it happen. Yeah, I saw uh, it happen. It was it. like, what the heck? It, it was a weird-looking injury, too. Like, it's kind of hard to pick out, like, where and how he exactly got hurt. But it was a lower leg thing. Well, and, and also, it's a little interesting seeing him in uh, number 34. Like, yeah. Yeah, that, sure that surprised me too. I'm not sure I knew that before last night. But, yeah, I tuned in to the Saints almost specifically because, oh, man, can't wait to watch Kool-Aid. He's in the starting lineup. He's a first-team corner, and they played their ones. I mean, hey, he was on the field with Cameron Jordan. Cameron Jordan's playing. That's the ones. And uh, Kool-Aid was out there. And uh, where number 34 was odd. Yeah, they were actually bragging on him on the broadcast were. about how well he's played so far. And um, so you hate to see that he was uh, a little banged up. But hopefully um, things will get – you know, evened out there. Um, 
Cam Latu caught a pass, at least one pass that I, I, I watched the first half, especially with Kool-Aid being out. I turned it off at halftime, but Cam Latu caught a pass for the 49ers in that first half. Uh, yeah, and by the way, I mean, the Brock Purdy – Alabama connection should be talked about more often. It isn't. I mean, Alabama was going to get Brock Purdy, and I think Iowa State came in at the last second, right? Yeah, and uh, our uh, our quarterback, where we want to brag about Alabama is, well, you we didn't sign Brock Purdy, but our quarterback evals during that period of time were just spot on. I mean, we even nailed Brock Purdy. I mean, we didn't get him, but we wanted him, and we were the only big program that did. And just for a while, I mean, even when we took Lane Hatcher because we were afraid Jalen was going to leave, which a lot of people didn't understand that at the time when we took Lane Hatcher, you know, a while back. I think they were concerned that we were going to have some last-minute quarterback attrition. So they went and took a, a, a two-star type quarterback over the summer, and it was Lane Hatcher. Even he ended up being a pretty good player. Yeah, he certainly did. And, um, you know, it was good to see Mac Jones playing a lot for the yep. Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, I think this is a guy who's going to settle in very nicely to Jacksonville. Um, it, it would – be a little weird if Trevor Lawrence got hurt or something and Mac Jones just comes in and shows out. Uh, hopefully he does. I, I mean, I, I would love to see him get another opportunity rather than where he was. Um, he walked into a horrible situation in New England. And, um, there's a you good know, question. That's this a good question for you. Might be a bit of a Bama Homer question, but uh, the Raiders announced they're going to start Gardner Minshew. He's going to be the quarterback. And I like Gardner Minshew. And there's another Alabama uh, connection. Yeah. But, uh, should the Raiders trade a second-round pick to the Jack Jacksonville Jaguars and uh, get Mac Jones to be their starter for this year? Is that an upgrade? Gosh, I mean, it's tough in it. I'd like it. Um, I'd like it too, but is it is it the right move for the Raiders? Second-round pick for Mac Jones. I just don't. Again, wouldn't he be walking into another death trap? Maybe. I mean, I mean, it might not be great for Mac, and it's not a great – Devontae game. Adams is there, but – and uh, the other kid who I think played at Notre Dame who's pretty good, um, and they got Brock Bowers now. I mean, I guess maybe it would be okay. I mean, their division isn't, you know, just breathtakingly good. I just good. wonder if any NFL team still views Mac Jones as a long-term franchise quarterback, or, or was he deemed that bad in New England? I, I don't – I don't know. My feeling is, and one of the reasons I bring it up is I think it's fascinating. I think if you went to all 32 NFL teams and said, is is how good is Mac Jones? I think you're going to get 32 different answers yeah, that's probably to some, some way or another. Some say, nope, career back up. Some say he'll be out of the league in three years. Maybe somebody out there is saying he can be a long-term franchise quarterback. And I'm just saying, if, if the Raiders have committed to Gardner Minshew, you wonder if like, okay, who's – who's the most quarterback hungry team in the league that needs a young guy to be the guy. And I, I might say the Raiders, you know, if that's another good point. If Gardner Minshew, by the way, who almost came to Alabama and really more of a learning to coach role. Learn him. Right. I mean, right. he wasn't, he wasn't even planning to be like, uh, he's like, I just want to learn to coach and be around some greatness. And then Washington state comes in the last second. But, um, it, you know, <laughs> If Gardner Minshew can hang around the league this long, I think he's you a good know, player. Look, I Chase good. Daniel, I, good lord, he may still be on it. Uh, he's Chase, solid. Yeah, Chase Daniel has made something like sixty million dollars playing so, playing and, backup quarterback for his whole career. I think Mac Jones can find a play. He may just be a career backup, which, by the way, is not an awful thing. What is Chase Daniel's Alabama connection? This is weird. It's tenuous, but it's weird. Ooh, to I don't know. That, this is crazy. Chase Daniels was the starting quarterback at South Lake in Dallas, and when he graduated and went on to wherever he oh, went on, he was McElroy. replaced by Greg McElroy in high school. Yeah, Greg yeah. McElroy replaced Chase Daniels as a starting quarterback there at South Lake. So it's a tenuous thing, but it's a good trivia no. question considering how good of a career Chase had as an NFL backup. No, that's that's actually very good. Um, any other Alabama stuff out there for you, Jimmy? Uh, I just want to give a brief shout out. I'm going to follow the sport a little more this year, but a brief shout out. Alabama's already actually playing sports. Shout out to the Alabama soccer team, which is really good these days. And they won their opener uh, two to one. And uh, so I just want to say, hey, Alabama soccer one and zero. Alabama University of Alabama one and zero on the year in anything. So uh, way to go, soccer team. Yeah, that you know, look, this team was in the Final Four not too terribly long. Yeah, two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Um, all right. That's going to do it for today's podcast. We'll be 
back tomorrow with more. Uh, be sure to go check out Locked On College Football. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. Spence does an amazing job over there. And um, we love to join him from time to time. And so go check out Locked On College Football. You will love it. And until next time, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.